Hello. On this exact date, 30 years ago today, I arrived in Chiang Mai for the first time. And it's always wonderful to be back here. Now, I had come direct from a silent meditation retreat in the South, where I'd been learning about the power of the senses and how not to become a slave to them. Now, the senses can be a distraction or they can be an indulgence, but they can also be a path to meaning. Now, imagine if it's you that's in a new place, and the way you react to it might be quite different than what you'd expected, and you want to understand a bit more about why that place is like it is. Or perhaps in your work, you need to uh, uh, encapsulate the senses of a place, or you need to appeal to uh, uh, running a project in a, a community so that it works with their local ways. Well, I'd like to talk to you today about a technique, a tool that we all have um, that can help us with this. It is to build a sensory profile of place. Now, I found over the years that if you use a wider range of senses, you start to notice things that you'd missed before. And because the senses are universal, uh, there's things we can learn about the specialness of a place, what we all have in common, and some things about yourself. So why was I in Chiang Mai 30 years ago? Well, I wanted to have a deep dive into the cultural immersion of the place, so I decided to study traditional lana massage. <laughs> So there I was, a student masseur, learning about Thai culture through the senses, through touch, through balance, through herbal oils, and through the uh, meridian lines that map our body in a way that I couldn't have ever imagined back in my home country, where the closest that strangers get is to shaking hands. <laughs> now, within a month, I was actually living in Bangkok. It, it transformed my life. Um, I was a journalist back then, and I was offered the chance to set up Bangkok's first city listings magazine. Now, being a listings journalist is a very rationalist kind of thing. It's all about uh, categorizing and standardizing. But there I was, surrounded by this culture that was very amorphous and seemingly chaotic, and uh, I was coming to realize that it isn't chaos, but it's another way of looking at the world, a bit more holistic, more relational, more sense-aware. Now, all around me in Bangkok, in the street, there was such color, such vibrance, and I was wanting to understand what it's about. But this kind of popular culture wasn't explained in those days. It was treated as something low that wasn't high culture. And so I set out to write a book called Very Thai to explain all this kind of stuff. And some of these things have gone on to become Iconic, think about the motorcycle taxi jackets or the magical tattoos. And a lot of these objects are also highly sensual. Think about the, the garlands being threaded from flowers on the street, or street food, or scented oils like this. And take a look at this massage tool. You can feel the way that it was handcrafted. This is another aspect of touch that really distinguishes Thailand, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, from many other cities around the world. And, and uh, while I was in um, Bangkok over a decade, I was becoming, it was becoming obvious that I had to uh, write about the city that I had adopted as my new home. It's very chaotic, but it needed some kind of ordering system. So how could I encapsulate what was happening there in some kind of system? Well, we do have these senses I was talking about, and they're an interpretive tool. And so uh, it was becoming uh, obvious that I needed to develop a sensory system for understanding the city, making that chaos have a little bit more order. So how might you go about uh, doing a sensory profile? Well, when you encounter something that's typical of the place, go through the senses until something uh, gives a re uh, revelation that pops out. Like, for example, seeing the way people drive in Bangkok, or the way that markets can set up, pack up, and then move to go to another place. All this is very similar to the culture of the boats in the floating markets in earlier in Thai history. Or you could look at pattern behavior, such as the way that Thai gardens are filled with pot plants that you can move the positions of any time you like. Now, there's also new technologies that can help us measure 
senses in uh, very abstract ways that can help us build a picture of a sensory profile which comes from all bringing all these things together, like I did in my book, Very Bangkok in the City of the Senses. So let's have a look at one of those senses, sound. Now, Bangkok is known as a place of uh, noise pollution, but it also can be incredibly delicate. Our ears can pick up temple bells. Uh, at the street corner, there'll be a Morlam player uh, who's in a part of a blind band. Now, one of those other things I wanted to mention was that um, we have uh, multiple senses in our body that are more than the standard five, uh, and the plus the sixth sense. Um, in fact, the body has as many as 32 senses. And many of these are internal, things like uh, temperature or hunger. But many of them are also um, giving us another interpretation that we are not really aware of most of the time. So when we look at something like touch, um, in fact, it's two senses. Uh, there's the strong touch that we feel in our muscles and our skin that we feel in massage. But there's also soft touch that we feel in the hairs of the body, where, uh, for example, you can, hear, uh, you can f feel the effect of a breeze or a tickle. Or in Thai culture, there's the hom gam, or the sniff kiss, which at the side of the cheek can be a sign of affection from elders, or between lovers can be a way to first base. Sight is, in fact, three senses. There's form or shape, and there's color, and there's also the emotional effect of color, which is a, has got a whole separate receptor. Now, in this culture, people are very sensitive to color. Think of the sensitivities of political colors here. But also fortune-telling colors. We've got days of the week colored according to the gems of planets and their deities. And I'm sure that some of you have got little charts you've got maybe on your phone or your wardrobe telling you what, what color is lucky or unlucky to wear today. Now, one of the other aspects about sight is how we look at ourselves and also our gaze. Um, and big data is enabling us to get some indications of this. Now, you've all taken selfies, right? Well, what if you put millions of selfies from one place together? you can start to see patterns emerging. And it turns out that Bangkok is an extreme outlier internationally in its color taste. Almost nobody will pick an Instagram filter that's monochrome. Not so many pick uh, neutrals or even pastels. They tend to amp up the saturation to temple fair color intensity. And it turns out also that data can reveal things about how we pose for photographs. So Bangkok people, they are also an outlier internationally about the way their bodies are held. Apparently, on average, Bangkok people tilt their head a little bit more than the international average. <laughs> they open their eye whites a little bit wider, and they gaze up through the corner of their eye. And if they smile, there's no teeth showing. And psychologists would point out that this is an expression of deference. So the next time you see people taking selfies, perhaps outside here today, take a closer look. <laughs> now, when we're uh, taking a photograph, we're using another sense we don't really realize, which is proprioception. That's its proper name. And it means the body in space. Now, Bangkok, when you look at its spatial sense, is a rather unique place. It's incredibly tight everywhere you go. And it's not just communities like this, where there's you know, you could touch the walls with your fingers. Um, there's hardly any open spaces, or if they are, they get filled with people's private stuff, whether it's cars or push carts, whether it's um, uh, handmade uh, furniture, or whether it's yet more of those pot plants. And as you're walking your way through these spaces, you're using another sense that we don't really realize until it fails which is balance. Now, this culture has an interesting relationship to balance, it's much more so than I've found in any other place I've visited. The culture is full of expressions of balance, like performing arts, in the martial arts, like Muay Thai, in uh, sports like Takro, with its acrobatic kicks. And also, balance is integral to Mariat, the Thai art of, uh, of manners, where 
uh, th there's a sort of cantilevering that happens when you're offering something politely to somebody. Uh, if you're praying in the temple, you're balancing on your knees and folded toes. And if you're prostrating in a temple, you cantilever the body with your ankle down to your knee, then the hip, then the elbow, to maybe make a Y. And there's a lot of sophistication in this use of balance that you really get to notice when that's done so clumsily by somebody foreign like me. <laughs> there are some senses that our body is feeling that we're mentally not so clear about or don't, have never heard of before, such as electromagnetic radiation. Some people have said it's the worst pollution in the world that we don't know about yet. Now, there's a German artist called Christina Kubisch, and she has mapped electromagnetism in cities all over the world. And there's one city that stands out as by far the worst. Can you imagine? <laughs> yes, Bangkok. So this is a graph of what the sound is, uh, sound is like when it's translated from uh, the electromagnetic waves into sound through headsets. So when she had an exhibition in Bangkok, I borrowed these headsets and walked around the city just to see what it'd be like. And I was horrified. It's so shocking. When I go to those places, I can't get it out of my mind, the impact of that. So I'd be walking down a quiet lane, or what I thought was quiet, but it would be thunderous through the headphones because of the cables above our heads. And then I'd hear this sharp piercing noise, and then I'd spot a CCTV camera it was coming from. Or there'd be this harsh rumbling, and it was an LED screen. And then something would sound like a washing machine, and then I realized it was a motorcycle going past. Now, you know, if you go into somewhere, you've got those security gates, and you wonder, what are they doing? They don't make any kind of uh, impact on you. Well, they do this. So you can get a sense of how important it is to consider the senses when you're doing things like city planning, or design, or hospitality, or other kinds of services. Uh, in Bangkok Design Week this month, they had many displays involving the senses. One was mapping Bangkok Yai District through different soundscapes at different times of the day. Another one was mapping the Jaran Krung area using color swatches from uh, distinctive buildings in that place. And there was also a session to do with uh, sensory help for the blind. When you think about the mountain roads around here, there are shrines often at accident black spots because they're using the sixth sense to get drivers to slow down at that point. And in Chiang Mai's past, people used to put water at the gate in case someone passing by had the sense of thirst. So how might a sensory profile of Chiang Mai be done as opposed to Bangkok? Well, in terms of motion, its pace would definitely be slower. Its palette of colors would be more natural. And its flavor profile is very different to the taste of central Thai food. And in terms of traditions, you've got a different range of sounds, like gongs and drums. And there's textures like sar paper or teak leaf thatch. So when you leave this hall and go back to your hometowns, wherever they are, have a go at making a sensory profile of the place. I'm sure you'll notice things that are distinctive to it that you hadn't quite defined before. And you'll notice some things about your own preconceived ideas. And you'll also have a much more intense, satisfying experience. Now, the best thing about this tool is it comes totally free with your body, and it's available everywhere you go. Thank you.